Hi, we Bob here. So today we're going to talk about Rebel 5 in 10 minutes. And when you open up Rebel 5, you start with this new artwork page and you can open up your recent artwork. You can open up something from your folders that you've already opened and worked on. We've got our canvas size here, which we can change and customize to the size that we want. And over here we can choose our canvas and we can change the texture scale here. We can get more papers from Escape Motions if we want. So we click OK. And as you can see, we've got our paper here. Up here, we've got our brushes, we've got oils, we've got express oils, watercolors, inks, pencils, pastels, markers, and airbrushes. We've then got some other independent tools that are independent of the brushes. We've then got the brush properties box, and then we've got the brush tip that we've chosen. So if I choose an oil, we'll just default, which is what this button does, back to the presets. That would be the default, basically default the brush and we can brush and we've got a brown because we chose a brown for some reason and we can choose a red. Now these two buttons here is the multicolored brush basically means when I add a color and I change the color the next one will have some of that previous color still intact to it. Dirty brush means that your paintbrush picks up other colors as you start to paint. So we'll move on to watercolors. We've got paint which basically just adds paint to the canvas without any mix. We've got paint and mix, which when you do it lightly, it will pick up some of the other color that's already on. Blend, I prefer this paint and blend, which then you can use to mix a lot better. And we've then just get plain blend, which means there's no paint on the brush. You're just blending what is already on the paper. So you can blend out that color, almost like a swatch. We've then got a razor, which is really handy because it means that you can choose different tips for your eraser. So I can erase these splats into place if I wanted some of this outlined in a different way. Looks kind of cool. We'll then get inking brushes and those are obviously for, let's say we wanted to make the, the girl's eyebrows a wee bit more distinct. So that's inking. The options menu stays kind of the same. The main thing you need to look at is for this water or in the case of oils it's oiliness which is to do with how smudgy that will go. In the case of water it will be to do with the watercolour effect that we'll get onto in a minute. These independent ones are we've got blending which is just a blending. If we go for the basic blender we're blending. It's good for smooth surfaces. We've got smudge which We'll smudge the paper. Again, you can choose different types of smudging. So you get a kind of jaggy effect with that one. My computer trying to catch up with the world. We've got clone, where we can clone the image. I'll show you this on a different drawing. We've got eraser, which again, you can choose different erase options. So if I wanted to add some kind of snowy effect to her hair. We've got the paint bucket, which does what a paint bucket does. We've then got the dropper brush, which lets you select any color on the paper. We've got undo and redo. We've then got the wet layer, which again, I'm going to go on to in a wee minute. We'll leave them just now. We've got our typical selection box where we can choose different shapes, the magic wand, we can invert, add, subtract from the selection, etc. So if I just choose a bit of the girl's head and I use the move tool, which is the next one, I can take that bit somewhere else. We can flip that bit if we want. We can then deselect everything, for example. We've got our move tool, which we've talked about. We've got crop tool. We can crop the image. If we zoom out, we can see these little handles. We can obviously crop the image. Say we just want this part of the image. If we hit enter here, it'll crop the full image. If I go back to watercolor, we can then see we've got our panel here and we've got our watercolor brushes as discussed. Now, if I add a lot of water to a brush and I bring up the opacity, let's choose round two and I've chose a red color. That is a now a watery painted surface. Over on the right here, we've got our layers panel. We've talked a wee bit about it. We can show the wet layer. This shows you everything that's wet on the page. We've got a pause, which unpauses a simulation of the watercolor or the diffusion as they call it. We can wet the layer, wet all visible, dry the layer, and we can dry all layers using this third button here. So if I unpause the simulation, you'll see the watercolor effect starting to take place. Now we can tilt the watercolour using this gadget here. Let's tilt it back towards 
the girl. We've also got settings where we can add drips. This is a drip coming off here. We've got a granulation, which I'll show you an example of just now. And we can then change those settings. One of the biggest things for watercolour is the visual settings. To show the visual settings, we have four painted test areas. There are four sliders at the top of the visual settings dialog box that affect how the paint will move on the paper and how the water will be absorbed or not absorbed. Test area one is with all the settings at zero and that will mean that the water is not absorbed quickly and the texture of the paper will have very little effect. This changes as we increase the sliders, as you can see. In this menu we can also control the drips and the granulation effect. To add water to the paper we use this little droplet icon. We can dry the paper using different textures and then we can blow the water around. Before we go into the colour menu let's talk about some keyboard shortcuts. So Control Z will undo, Control Shift Z will redo. If we hold the space bar down we can move the canvas around the page. We can use the control key if we hold that down and move our brush to the left or to the right. We can change the brush size. If we do the same and hold the control key and we go up and down we can change the opacity of the brush. We can use Shift to get the ruler and that's one of the best rulers I've came across, one of the most intuitive rulers I've came across. There is also another ruler that you can use in the edit menu. There is also a perspective tool where you can do one point, two point and three point perspective as illustrated. So let's talk about the colour palette. Over on the right hand side here we've got colour tab which gives us the colour wheel or we've got colour set. Now if I pull the colour set out, you use the blue text to do that. Click and drag on the blue text and if I expand this out, what you can see is there's different colour palettes that I've got downloaded. I've made, like I've made a new one here. We can make new ones using the menu from a, an image. So we could choose a, an image that we like. Let's go for a 25 of this alien Sigourney Weaver image. If I hit open, it automatically creates me a nice lovely palette with all the hex codes associated with those colours if you want to use them. But we've also got a lot down here where we can choose our watercolour set and it, all the names are similar to those that you would find in like a traditional art set. We can choose some of the pre-built in. We've got a body one here which will give you face and skin tones which is great. We've got a grayscale one. We can create a new set just by clicking this button down here and then we can drag and drop colours as we see fit. So say I like this red that I've used, I can literally just drag and drop that into the new colour set. I like that colour, new colours created. You can delete colour sets, duplicate colour sets. I'm just going to redock this and we can redock just by pulling it across. If you want it to become a tab, it needs to go in beside that rather than up above where it takes up a massive amount of space. A few other more advanced things that you might want to look at is the brush creator tool. So over in the menu below where we were talking about the size, opacity, water etc. We've got the brush creator button that we can press and it gives us the ability to make massive changes to the brush. Now what I would suggest you do is that you duplicate your brush first. So rather than going there straight away, go to your brush click that button, the wee hamburger menu button and duplicate brush preset. You can then rename it if you want. I've called it Bob7 and then I go to the brush creator tool for Bob7 and I can literally change the shape of Bob7. One of the things I would tell you to look at is the curve editor because this really does make a big difference and it'll give you really odd looking shapes and sizes for your brushes. It's really handy for making the likes of a cat tongue brush. There is also this line smoothing. You click and you drag and it pulls the line behind you. So handy really for if you're wanting to get say the outline of the nose and you want it to be smooth. And it gives you the kind of idea that line smoothing is really really cool. There is this um, pigment which gives your colours a more traditional look and the mixing comes together. can cause you some problems if you're exporting to Photoshop for example, so just be aware of that. We've got the opacity of the layer up here. We can then create new layers down the bottom. So export to Photoshop for example. Um, new layer, new group, duplicate layer, merge layers. So quite often I will get to a stage in a, an image and I will want to duplicate that layer so rather than have this squashed face I want to go back to my original and I want to duplicate it so that I can 
keep that. Let me duplicate it properly. So now I've got this layer, which is that image, and I'm back to my original image. I've got another video if you want to watch up in the top left hand corner, walking through one of the drawings that I did, talking through some of these options again. If this video has been of use to you, please remember to leave a like. Thanks for watching, and we Bob is out.